But let me describe another ritual that uh, two other friends of mine did at uh, the uh, Sacred Harvest Festival a number of years ago. Robin Grimm and uh, uh, Chris Moore, the usual suspects, you may be beginning to be rude to recognize these names at this point, uh, put together what was essentially a week-long festival called the Passion of the Harvest. And this was the pagan ritual, the kind of pagan ritual that it is, it is one of the top five rituals I have ever been to in my life. I, it, it, I wish every pagan festival had a ritual like this. Uh, the passion of the harvest. Uh, it's nice having very talented friends. And uh, one of Chris's friends actually made a reproduction of a ancient Celtic war chariot. Uh, and so at noon on the first day of the festival, let's say Monday, the horns blew and the beautiful young man who was personifying the Harvest King, who was the Harvest King, uh, climbed up into the chariot and we pulled him through the campgrounds. And uh, we made a big circular procession and that was it. And the people, many, many of the people that saw it sort of wondered what was going on and you know, that was it. The next day at noon, the horns blew again. The young man got into the chariot. We pulled him around. This time there were more, some people came out to, to watch it as it happened. Wednesday, when we made the procession at noon, uh, peep, some, some people joined in at the end of the procession and followed the Harvest King through the campgrounds. Meanwhile, there was no description of this in the program. Nothing was said. People figured things out for themselves as they saw it happening. They didn't need to be told what was happening or what to do. The very best ritual is the ritual that gives its own directions. If you need to tell people, and now we're going to, you might as well just stop the ritual right there because you failed. It's sort of, the ritual itself should lead us to the next place in the ritual. So this happened every day through the course of the entire festival. We added musicians to the procession. Uh, the Harvest King had, came to have a bowl of corn that when people came to the edge of the road, he would th throw at them to bless them. People would bring their children to the procession route to be blessed. It was deeply beautiful to see people engaging this ritual. On Saturday, we had the final procession, Saturday night. Uh, we processed the Harvest King down to the ritual circle. We turned the chariot around so it kind of became the stage on which the Harvest King stood. The Harvest King made the sacred marriage with the people. He was married to, I think, uh, six young women, six young men. Uh, and uh, we all got up, and the music went up, and we all got up to dance in honor of the marriage of the Harvest King. Um, and in the middle of the dance, uh, suddenly a shadow came stalking in. Walking in out of the cornfield, out of the sunset, was she of the dark shroud, the reaper, and she came in. It was like uh, it, it, it was it, it was almost like the uh, the uh, bar scene when the bad guy walks in the in the the uh, Texan film the um, cowboy film where the bad guy walks into the bar and you know suddenly slowly the conversation dies out and suddenly the piano stops playing and there's a hush and it was like that the dancing stopped and the instruments fell off one by one and um, the shadow took the young king and together they walked off into the cornfield just as the sun was setting they walked off into the cornfield and this is not literally the earth shaking beneath our feet i can tell you there was not a dry eye in the house it was real it was the true thing it was a beautiful beautiful utilization of the space and of the tribe and of the demographics there it involved the teens and uh, to end the ritual, the uh, six young men went out into the middle, drew straws. We crowned the next Harvest King, who was absolutely delighted to have it. 
And uh, let's see, he got in the chariot and we pulled him back to the place where the bonfire was burning and the drums were beating and the party began. It was an amazing, amazing ritual. It was a once in a lifetime ritual. Um, and people began to say afterwards, we should be doing this ritual every year. This is what ritual can do. This is how ritual can bring us together as a community, articulate our deepest values, the value of self-giving, the value of sacrifice, the value of the tribe, the value of the community. And not only that, but to connect us with the rest of the world, with that cornfield, with the setting of the sun. Tell me a story. Read number three.